welcome back to another episode of Tiny Chair Talks, where we have big conversations in tiny little chairs. Make sure that you think about what you wanna comment on today's video, questions you might have, input you might have on our topic. Today we're talking about social influence, so let's get right into it. These are cozy. With us, we have Roger Hernandez. Hello. Hi. Good to see you today. Thank you. Good to be here. So in another episode of Tiny Chair Talks, we talk about social media and how we can use that to influence mm -hmm. others for good. Yeah. So what are other things as Christians, even as Adventists, that we can do to influence others or impact the um, culture and the world around us? What are some things we can do to impact to influence that in a positive way? I think it starts with somebody understanding the level of influence that human beings have on other human beings. Mm. Um, I was doing some research for this uh, episode uh, and Tim Elmore uh, was sharing a statistic that sociologists tell us that even the most introverted person mm -hmm. will have 10,000 influence moments wow. in their lifetime. Wow. So the question is not whether I have influence or not. It's the type. But how I'm going to use the influence that I do have. Wow. Um, and, and many people don't see themselves as influencers mm -hmm. because they don't have two million followers on Instagram. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they have 22. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And 20 of them are Russian bots, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, like your mom doesn't follow you. Right? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so, so we have to ask ourselves, all right, I have in my lifetime mm. 10,000 influence moments. Wow. I need to wake up every day thinking to myself, the opportunities for the day mm. that God offers me, I need to crush it. Yeah. I need to be aware and intentional so when those happen, I can influence people. For example, a mother. So, well, I'm an introverted mother. I don't have a lot of people that, that look up to me, mm -hmm. but, but she has a child. Mm -hmm. She influences that child. Right. And my, my grandfather uh, was a baker. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was, he, he cut hair mm -hmm. and he was a soldier. Wow. Never, never spoke in front of people. He went to church, he sat down, and after the, it was over he went home. But he influenced my father was a pastor hmm. and my father influenced me who was a pastor and then I influenced my daughter hmm. who's a pastor so because oh. of the influence of one person it has grown mm -hmm. but, but he, he would have never thought I'm gonna be able to influence countless people with the gospel Right, it's not just in your family, it's all the people each Correct. individual has made Correct. contact with. Wow. So how, how do I, how do I uh, harness this influence <laughs> for good? That's the first question to ask. Yeah. So just being aware even of the influence that we have and then being intentional. You use the word intentional, I really mm -hmm. love that. Intentionally going out and using that influence. Yeah. I think something that, this is something that I tell my, uh, my, my kids all the time, and now that they're young adults, they're like, okay, yeah, I get it now. But <laughs> I, I used to repeat it a lot, and it's this. Somebody is always watching. 
<laughs> Whether you have Alexa at home or not, uh, or <laughs> the TSA is watching you, somebody's always watching. Yeah, it's true. Uh, somebody, because we live public lives, mm -hmm. because with every social media account that we have, you know, they can track stuff that we like to eat, where we go, our beliefs, our political statements, what we think about God, what we mm. say or what we, what we don't say about God. So we, I have to be aware that I am in a constant state of influence. It's this not just moments even, it's a constant state, wow. Correct. Wow. We're, we're having this conversation right now. Mm -hmm. S some people are gonna watch this. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're gonna share it with some other people. Mm -hmm. but, we uh, we're having a conversation there's two people but behind this conversation there's other people mm -hmm. who thought about the idea who was editing it who puts it who uploads it right who decides what content is who directs it these are people that would never be on camera mm -hmm. people would never see but they have influence on them right because of what they do so i have to look at myself and say all right and now that i know that i have influence how do I develop it? Right. Well, what are some ways that you would suggest we develop that influence? What are some specific things that you would advise people to do? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's four that I would like, that I wrote down, that I think are important. Uh, there, are, there are four levels of influence. They all start with M. I'm okay. a pastor, so I like alliteration. Yeah. <laughs> um, Easy to remember. Yeah. The number one is, is model. Model. Yeah. So once again, it, somebody's always watching. Uh, I think that um, there's a Stanford, yeah, Stanford University put out a study that 89% of people are visual learners. Hmm. Um, so, I, I, okay, so somebody is watching me. I can model for them. Can be how I can be a parent because I'm a parent, mm -hmm. a husband, a pastor, um, a person who who likes to exercise. So I I want to model, not a perfect model, but but I can influence somebody in right. by by the stuff that I right, right? to the best uh, of your ability. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. Um, number two is to motivate. Motivate. So model is I'm, I'm watching you. Mm -hmm. Motivation comes when I have a relationship with you. Okay. That I can say, you know what? I see some things in you mm. uh, that sometimes you don't even see in yourself. Mm. You're really good with people. I've been watching you. And it seems that you always have a good word. You, you know what? You're, you're a friend who... who who is really good at listening. Hmm. I, I have some things that I've done in my life that I would have never done if somebody had not motivated me. Hmm. Write the book. Right. You can do it. Right. It's, it's just, so the first one is somebody's watching me. The second one is I'm interacting with somebody, so I mm -hmm. motivate them. I do that with my kids. Uh, we're in a, we're in a group text. First of all, group texts are of the devil. I don't know. Whoever puts me in a group text is not, not going to heaven. <laughs> there, will be, there will be no group text in heaven. If you, there's a group text in heaven, you're not in heaven, uh, bro. Uh, so uh, stop, stop sending me uh, pictures of cats on Facebook and adding me to group text. All right. <laughs> This so these are, we need to make a separate video <laughs> of stuff, <laughs> stuff not to do. All right, so, um, so model, motivate. Motivate. Number three is to mentor. Mentor. Right? So I'm not just your cheer, cheerleader. Now I can, I can show you how it's done. Hmm. I can bring you along. Um, I had a really, really good mentor that helped me in my preaching. Mm. Right and and he said, "Hey, I see that you have the ability to communicate, but you always seem to be talking about the same thing." Hmm. And he's like, "How much are you reading? What kind of commentaries are you using?" So I I decided 
because of his mentorship to read one book a week. And that's my goal. Okay. I don't always get to one book a week, but that's my goal. That's the goal. It leaders are readers. And mm, I got that from leaders him. Leaders are readers. I yeah. like that. Yeah, it, it, I got that from him. He mentored me. He took me aside. He spent time with me. Mm -hmm. He helped me when I had insecurities and questions. Um, really hard to find mentors the higher you get in whatever job that you do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's harder to find mentors. Right. But you can find mentors by videos. and uh, So who can I intentionally mentor? Mm -hmm. Like in my role right now, I travel, we travel a lot, my wife and I, we, we spend two nights out of the week sleeping in our home. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so, a lot. So, so we, yeah, <laughs> That's we're a lot road. of travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I said to myself, I, I want to mentor two pastors every year. So mm. for the whole year, I select a couple of pastors and we have a conversation every month. Wow. I give them a book every month. We discuss the book every month. Intentional mentoring. That's great. Somebody doesn't have to be 52 years old to mentor somebody. <laughs> you're 20, you can mentor a 12-year-old right. that will look up to you. Right. right. You're 15, you can mentor somebody who's 8. Right. So mentors are, are, are significant because if you think back in your own life, mm -hmm. you can point to mentors mm -hmm. and say, this this person not only believed in me and was my cheerleader from mm -hmm. afar, he invested in my life. Right. In a significant ways. Right? So that's the third M. And then the fourth one is multiplication. Mm. Where the person that you influence now influences other people. Other people. Um, and that's how influence grows. That's fantastic. And yeah. you know, as you go through this, so so um, influencing others. So just to summarize that was um, modeling, mm -hmm. motivating, mentoring, and seeing the multiplication coming from that. And that, you know, as you're going through that, it makes me think of the New Testament letters. Correct. It's the New Testament letters. There's modeling of behavior. Yep. Then there's that. Um, he says, "Follow me as I follow Christ." Follow me as me. I follow Christ. And then it was modeling. Um, um, what was the second one Motivation. again? Motivation. Yeah. You know, being that cheerleader. A lot of the letters start with, "Hey, you're doing great things, and yeah. we love God," and giving this motivation. Yeah. Then you go into mentoring, giving advice, yeah. edifying. Yeah. And then Paul, this... Paul did that with Timothy. Yes. So he took him along. Yes. And said, you, I'm going to mentor you. And, and then ended with, what does that result in? People having then an influence and impact Correct. on others. Correct. I love that. Those Correct. are fantastic. Correct. Those four M's. And being so intentional seems to be a recurring theme too. Right. And, and you have to understand that at, you are at the same time in the four mm. as a participant and also a leader. Right. Because you can be motivating somebody, awesome. but somebody's motivating you, you also. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so it's important as an influencer, and now that we all understand that everybody's an influencer, yes. as an influencer, you have to understand and be very careful that mm -hmm. you don't get into something we call relational deficit. Relational deficit. Mm -hmm. Which is that you're always mentoring, motivating, multiplying, ah. and modeling to others. But you never have somebody motivate and hmm. model and multiply and, and, and invest in your life. Mm -hmm. that, that's, a, that's a relationship, relationship or relational deficit. Relational. We all, you're in, in people that work with other people, mm -hmm. like counselors and pastors mm -hmm. and, and people that, that are service industry mm -hmm. who are always giving, mm -hmm. you have to be careful because if that happens, you're not going to be the best influencer you can be, right? Because you're 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 working in a deficit, right? And that's problematic. So, for people watching this video that recognize they are in a deficit, what mm -hmm. can they do then to to fix that, to rectify that? How would you s suggest to go about fixing that deficit to fill up that space? Uh, 
a couple of things. Number one, I heard a, a nice story about a person who was in a relational deficit, and he said, um, he said, all I need is God, my wife, and Max, hmm. which is his dog. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting, like, okay, yeah. so who's Max? The, the Max <laughs> is, is, but his wife, so a counselor was talking to him about mm -hmm. it, and his wife was like, no, please, get him other people <laughs> <laughs> because he has all these issues mm. and then he dumps them on me on, yeah only mm. so let get him other other people right uh, so here's some practical things right um no it's i'm i never say never but it's very rare that somebody's going to approach you and say i want to mentor you mm -hmm. so you have to seek those relationships so how out. do you do it you sit with somebody you understand, you recognize you're in a relational deficit, right? You sit with somebody and say, share something, somebody you think could be a good mentor. Mm -hmm. You share with them something that is vulnerable. Mm. How they react will tell you whether that person is a, would be a good mentor. Like you, okay. you, you say, for example, I'm concerned uh, about my friend Zara, uh, Sarah because you know she's been having some su substance abuse issues, mm -hmm. and I really care for her. Mm -hmm. And you open up mm -hmm. about what it means that relationship means to you to this person. If they look at you and say, "Isn't this a great? Isn't it hot today? Isn't it? Isn't it?" Man, it's humid today. <laughs> <laughs> they just the, kind of let it, it yeah, fade. <laughs> the, the, there are people that are not, they can't handle mm -hmm. having uh, other than superficial conversation. Right. Um, or if they go, really? Your friend Sarah is having issues? Well, I had a friend who also had mm. issues, and this is what I did with them, and mm -hmm. this is what I did with them, and this is what I did with them, and I think you should read this book. And, make, and so they vomit all <laughs> this information, no, information and, yeah. instead of, that would not be a good mentor. But if somebody looks at you and says, man, that, was, that must be really hard for you. Mm. Tell me more. Mm. Then you found the person. The problem okay. is it's like a unicorn. It's really hard to find good mentors. <laughs> So when you do find them, <laughs> grab onto <laughs> grab them onto quick. Them, but they exist. They mm. exist. Um, we we just when when we think, well, who's going to mentor me? Who? Um, I think it says more about the beliefs that you have in yourself mm. versus the the ability or the reality that there are people that can mentor you. It just we just c get caught up in. And the people that we relate to and think, well, this is all I get. Who's going to mentor me from my stupid friends? You know, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but, but maybe you expand the circle. Yeah. And maybe you start mm -hmm. putting that into intercessory prayer and mm -hmm. say, I need some people in my life that are going to model for me. Mm. I need some motiv motivators. So who's going to model? So who's somebody that I can just watch? Right. I don't even have to have a relationship with them. Right. I can watch them from afar. Mm. I can read their books. Right. I can listen to their podcasts. I can watch some stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Tiny Chair Talks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. That, that's, a, that's a model. Yeah. Right? And then who's going to motivate me? Who's my cheerleader? Mm. Who picks me up? And then the, the, the third one is, 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 is the one that, that I need to spend the most intentional time in because that person is going to determine the level of growth that I'm going to have. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how you get out of the relational deficit. It doesn't happen by you wishing it didn't exist. Right, that's and you can't person. just wait for someone to attach themselves to you. You right. have to seek out and take responsibility right. for that. Scripture says if you want to, uh, I'm paraphrasing, right? If you, you want to have friends, show, show yourself friendly. Mm -hmm. For introverts, it's really hard, though, mm. because introverts uh, prefer fewer friends, deeper relationships. Right. Um, they don't. They don't talk to random people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes a while. They have their but, circle. But it's yeah, but it's possible though. Right. It's possible. Right. Yeah.
That's great. Yeah. Well, I think that's, I love those four M's. I think that's fantastic. Good things to keep in mind and remembering that, you know, we don't have to just wait for somebody to come talk to us or decide they want to mentor us and, and have a role in our lives that we should pray for and seek out those people for, our, for ourselves. Correct. So that's fantastic. And our influence is constant, Correct. Always, always, in ways we don't even see. So using that for good, following scripture and, and God's word and exemplifying his character. One thing that I would like to uh, just really, uh, and I hope this, may, this makes it in the video. <laughs> it, it is important. Um, I'm finding out more and more, especially in interactions that we have with people mm -hmm. as we converse with them in mm -hmm. our social media interactions. Um, we live in a, a grievance culture. Mm. Um, the, we live in a society that, and whatever you post can, can, can go e either way. So I, I'm being more judicious about stuff that I put on social media because as Christians you have to be positive and mm. prophetic. Okay. Positive and prophetic. And it's really hard to keep that balance. Yeah. Because you have to speak truth to power. Mm-hmm. But you have to, you can't become a cynic. Mm-hmm. Because if you become a cynic, you lose your creativity. Because hmm. cynicism kills creativity. Right. Okay. So, so I, I need to understand, whoever is reading on social media, mm -hmm. whoever I'm interacting with, whoever I'm, I'm is, is listening when I teach mm -hmm. or preach or whatever job that I have, mm -hmm. I have to make sure that I don't become a cynic hmm. because nobody follows cynics. Hmm. They, they lose followers pretty, it's, it's this, this toxic thing that becomes growing in you. And a cynic is, is a disappointed optimist. Somebody, hmm, some, I hadn't thought of it that way before. Yes, somebody. Why so? so why somebody cynical? Somebody in relationships, for example, mm -hmm. because they had good hopes for a relationship that did not work out. Hmm. So this is what they said to themselves: "I know how that story ends. Hmm. When you when you love somebody, then they break your heart." Hmm. That. It started off with an optimist right. that becomes a cynic. Right, wow. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that happens in church life too. Mm -hmm. Why are people cynical towards church? You know, I joined a whole generation that I, that I talked to who were just like, mm, I don't know. Mm, <laughs> I don't know about like my parents' church. Uh, why, why is it? Because something happened along the way mm -hmm. that, that they, they say, I know how this how the story ends. Right. When you try to do something for the church, then they, they cut you down, they put hmm. you aside, they really criticize, mm -hmm. they, they major on minors. So, so the, the, keeping this in balance in my yeah. influence, and say I, I want to post. I I look at my Instagram. In my Instagram during the day, I try to. First thing I want to do in the morning, I want to post a, a scripture. Number two, I want to post something funny. <laughs> and then I want to post something that is my opinions or mm -hmm. whatever, something that is happening in the world or it's the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I'm only, if I'm, I'm like a one-trick pony, and I'm always concentrated. I see some people that got so fixated in politics yeah. that every single post mm. is about politics, mm -hmm. right or left, and every single everything is, and and, and it's hard not to become cynical when that happens. And then you influence, what happens is, when you become cynical, people tune you out. Mm. And then your influence is diminished. So we have to stay hopeful. Yeah, we have to stay hopeful. We have to stay prophetic, but we also have to stay positive. Positive, yeah. and it's, it's such a unique position that we have as Christians yeah. that, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what the situation, we do have a positive message to give. Absolutely. That we have Christ and, and this hope for the future. Absolutely. And that's what we need to be using our influence for, is sharing that love and that hope. That's incredible. And I just, you know, I appreciate I, those four M's especially are really going to stick with me. And, yeah. and the fact that, you know, 
influence isn't just something that you have on others, but something that you seek out for yourself, and you can choose who you are influenced by. That's fantastic. I thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Tiny Chair Talks, Big Conversations in Little Chairs. If you like this episode, give us a like, comment down below, subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss any new episodes coming up. We appreciate your support here on the Project Refresh channel. Stay tuned for our next episode.